Hello everyone, Dustin here again on Steeplehead Studios. I am going to do something that I haven't done for a while, an unboxing. I've got some stuff here from Warlord Games and I'm going to open it up and take a look at it. You already know what it is since you can see the title. <laughs> and I already know what it is too, but let's open it up here anyway. I used the utility knife to pop it open. Let us see what we've got. We have, who packed this? Chris H. Thank you, Chris H. for packing this for me. What do we got here? We got for Hail Caesar. We've got El Cid, Ben Yusuf's Black Guard. Yes, I have these fellows that have come to me. We'll look at those after because I want to focus on these Perry miniatures that you can see here. I went and got a box of Agincourt. Agincourt French Infantry. Now, I'm sure YouTube has tons of videos with this unboxing on it, but this is just my own personal take on it. Um, there's a bunch of shrapnel from the uh, <laughs> shattered blister pack there. Um, but yeah, this is just my personal take on the Agincourt French Infantry. I am not going to be using these for Hail Caesar. I've been doing a lot of Hail Caesar content lately, but um, I want to, with a couple of friends, start another game. We're going to be doing uh, Lions Rampant in the New Year's, I think. So I'm trying to get all my Romans done, and then I want to work on just this box and a few other items from Perry Miniatures directly that I, I want to put together. So here we go, Agincourt French Infantry, 1415 to 1429, 28 millimeter hard plastic, good box art. It, it's basically what's in the box. Um, and I'll show you on the back here. Oh, we got another, we have to look at all these people who help pack it. We got a signed name, I think it's, Amadeus, I want to say it's Amadeus. <laughs> I, I cannot read this name, but thank you for whoever helped to prepare this with Chris H. <laughs> so, here we go, Perry Miniatures. On the back, you get a bunch of other art and uh, some more color examples of how you could paint these guys. We have 42 figures in here. There's, it comes with bases and it also comes with flags, all designed by Alan Perry there. So, we're getting 36 infantry in there and six men at arms. Uh, you can read that there on your own and find it online if you want, but basically, from my understanding, what I should get in here is enough guys to do at least 12 crossbowmen and um, six men-at-arms or knights, foot knights, obviously, and the rest of them in infantry. So, let's pop this open and look right at her. Try and do it with one hand here. This is my first box of Perry miniatures. I've never owned them before. I've only checked them out in person through friends briefly and uh, also on the, in some stores that just had open boxes. Okay, and we got some uh, bases here. It's always from Renedra. Renedra's got some bases. They are not the kind of bases I like to use because they're not 20 millimeter or uh, 20 by 20 or 40 by 40 millimeter, but that's okay. I usually just sell them on eBay <laughs> or put them out uh, for scenery or something like that. Here's the booklet, and it comes with a whole bunch of looks like banners. We've got uh, Joan of Arc standards, or rather Jones of Arc standard here. We've got the Oriflame, however you pronounce that. The standard of uh, the Duc de Orleans, Orleans, I cannot speak French. I can't even say Orleans properly. <laughs> But yeah, they give you some banners in there that I'm assuming you can cut out and just make use of. Just some more infantry art. Here are some of the uh, cross examples if you want to put the symbol of Christianity on them. And there's some color, co or some common colors that you would see on the uh, different uh, Akatans and uh, different uniforms from the medieval era there. And I'm sorry if I butcher all these names. I'm always bad at pronouncing <laughs> these ancient names and gear the first time I see it. You get a whole bunch of noble banners, and I'll probably just be using some of these in my own uh, little uh, war band in, in, in Lions Rampant, but you've get a, you get a whole bunch of here. Oh, it even tells you who was killed at Agincourt, so I shouldn't use them. If I want to play beyond Agincourt, I shouldn't be using Philippe here, or Robert de Bar, or Jean Desire. You know, I, I shouldn't be using these because they're all dead. I guess I'll avoid those. That's too bad. That dolphin fish thing there is pretty cool. <laughs> Here's some city banners. I'll definitely be using Paris. Who doesn't want to use a boat? Rowan and Leon. I can't say speak French. I'm Canadian. I can't speak French. How sad is that, eh? 
Koblenz, Dubens, and Tabards, just more art examples of how you can put them together. I love the art in this book and all these knights that they've put together in drawings and colors. But yeah, you can just cut these out and use all those there. And before you cut them out, you can just get a little blurb here about uh, French infantry. So it looks like, okay, it's just some color examples and teaching you how you can put them together. I'd probably just be painting them in my own way that I like. I will follow these colors, I think, these common colors. But um, I'm not just going to be painting French in this set. The um, Scottish helped the French a lot in this, uh, the third part of the, um, the uh, Hundred Years War, which we're doing. I think it's called the Lan Lancaster era, whatever it is. I have to read up on my uh, medieval history, <laughs> but um, yeah, I am going to be doing a mix of Scottish and French forces in my little group of soldiers for Lions Rampant. Okay, so that's good with the book there. Let's go right into looking at these sprues here. The best part of the unboxing. With one hand, whoops, there goes the knights. That's the small sprue. Let's look at the knights first. Okay, maybe we'll move this over so we've got the bottom here, the green backing. So, first of all, we get the knights. And this is the first time I've looked up close at uh, Perry Miniatures on my own. And they're a good size. I thought they would be a little smaller. They kind of remind me of Ajima Miniatures for proportion, but I think they're just um, a little more beefier. A little stronger. You've got these knights here that uh, a lot of these guys still have their tunics and their and their I guess their kind of uh, cloth uniform on. From my understanding, the English were the first to kind of get rid of that and just wear plate, where the French kind of held on to the the uh, the banners and not the banners but the emblems and such on their actual clothing. So we've got a bunch of different helmets here, and uh, they're all kind of rounded and 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 curved, typical of that era. And you can see they've all got the visors on there. I'm not going to have any guys with their faces up. These guys are going to be heavy metal. I'm sticking the visors on all of their fronts so you can't tell who they are. They're their own men. We've got these very well detailed uh, sidearms, which uh, I think every knight should have. You wouldn't want to go into battle if you're a knight or a man at arms without a sidearm there. Looks like we got the Beck de Corbin, or the, the, I think it's called the Crow's Beak in English. A great sword, or a bastard sword, or something like that. A war hammer, a nice axe. I'll be using all of these. There's some spears in here for these knights. I guess they're cut down lances. But um, I don't know if I'll equip my knights with these, just because I, I feel spears and lances on foot are more of like a peasant weapon. If there's weapons I can use in the, in the infantry sprue that are not the uh, footmen here, they're not the foot knights rather. I think I'll switch them out because I, I like to give my knights something a little more intimidating than a spear. You only get one shield and one sword here. So I guess these foot knights are more so your, um, I guess just heavy two-handed wielders for the most part. I may put in some different shields, more of the kite shield look. I have some nice decals in my collection, some old LBM our little big man studio decals I might put in. See the back here really quick. Oh yeah, you got the chain coif coming down, all the straps, these are very well detailed. I mean, you always hear a good thing about Perry miniatures. I always see people who have painted them and they always look awesome. Now I can see for myself just how great they are. I mean, everything is awesome. Even the gauntlets, like, like even the gauntlets there, gauntlets aren't small, you know, you've got your hands and when you put, if you've ever worn, um, armored mitts or gauntlets, you know that your hand suddenly becomes large. <laughs> and this is, I think, well represented here. Maybe we'll look at the other, maybe there's some non-armored hands in the, on the other sprues that we'll look at. But uh, yeah, overall, very good for the knights. I'm, uh, very, uh, I'm very excited to put this one together and start painting these guys. But uh, let's take a look at the, uh, the regular duos, the uh, foot infantry, or the uh, sergeants, I guess, that aren't going to be my nobleman in, uh, in my collection here. So you get three of these sprues, and there's three identical, and you get a whole ton of stuff here. Um, you have here, we have six bodies at the top, and then another six at the bottom. One thing I immediately notice in this box set is that they're only giving me, 
one, two, three, four, five, six. I only count 12 heads. Oh, no, I found some more. There are 14 heads in total on a sprue, which isn't that much, I think. I think other companies give you more head options, but uh, for lowly peasants and sergeants and whatever you're making, I think that's good enough. So you get about 14 heads on this sprue here. All sorts of different armor that they've got going here. Some of them look like they're better armor than others. That guy looks like he's even got chain there, not chain, a, a plate. So he must have some good connections. Um, on the other side, I think this side is a little lighter looking for armor. It's more leather and uh, padded stuff. I think these guys are going to be more so the uh, um, crossbowmen that I'll put together. I do love the kind of helmets you get. You kind of get that helmet there with that neck guard. Um, this guy's upside down here. Oh, that wasn't it. But you get different shapes of helmet of that helmets of that era. You can get the kettle helmets. So that's cool. I don't know about this helmet here. I've never seen this weird scale helmet. <laughs> kind of looking like a turtle head. Maybe I'll put the Ninja Turtles in my army or something. <laughs> um, but no, I, I might not use that one. That's not something I have seen. I may, I may not. We'll see. Uh, on the other side, the heads are very similar. You can see how good the details on the beards are. Like, look at that, the expression and the guy's beard and mustache there. Another guy with the with a nice uh, covered plate in front of his face. What else do we got here? I love that chain covering there. That's great. Wow, these are really well detailed. And this kettle's all shaped funny. That's really good. I like that effect. They're not just like perfectly formed, but that, that kettle helmet there has a bunch of curves and such to it. So very nicely done on the heads and the bodies. You can see the details just pop crazy well there. Um, what am I getting for weapons? So there are three identical sprues here. So in total, you're getting three times 12, which is 36 exactly as the box tells you. That's good. So per sprue, you can see you get four crossbowmen. So yes, that means that uh, you can make four crossbow fellows for each sprue. So four times three is 12, exactly as I want to do it. Um, there's musician, in, there's a, the trumpet in there. Of course, you might want to put a musician in your little warband or army. You get bolts, you get some containers to hold the bolts. Oh, you even got the, uh, what's it called? Um, that crank there, you can see that the guy's cranking up his crossbow. So, so I'll have to play around a bit with these and to see how they look for uh, putting things together. Here's a nice old, uh, it's not a halberd, it's a bodacious, I forget the name. Kind of a pole axe going there. They've got a short sword or a dagger, a nice curved blade, I'll be using that. There's a free hand with some kind of passive looking shields there. I imagine he's holding on to it. I think someone has it laying on the ground and they're holding on to it. It looks like there's some um, a free hand here. You can also just put the shield on directly if you want. So there's also a, a nice looking couple of two-handed axes there, just your basic sword. Okay, there are some spears. There's not as many spears in this set as I thought there would be. Oh, there's some more. Okay, there's four. So you can again make basically 12 spearmen out of this set. Um, bucklers, okay. They're quite small, but that makes sense. They're just deflecting blows with them. They're not stopping arrows or anything. Bunch of swords, more bucklers. How many bucklers do you get? It looks like you get four bucklers. So you can essentially, you could, with a different combination of one-handed weapons here, you could make a bunch of just, uh, I call them sword and board, but I guess they're sword and buckler men here. But uh, yeah, overall, really awesome detail. Really cool models. I mean, I'll look up those heads. I love these heads. A little smaller than I'm used to when working with Victrix and stuff, but wow, like the details just dead on. It's like, no wonder everybody loves Perry Miniatures. They've done such an awesome job on this kit. So yeah, that's the Lion's Ramp and stuff I want to be doing. Um, I want to put together, as I was discussing before, a mix of a Scottish and France kind of a, a group of soldiers. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to have your 12 crossbowmen in one of the uh, units. There'll be 12 of your regular spearmen sergeants, which in Lion's Rampant are kind of your basic fellows. They get the rule called the children, I think, where they can form that kind of spear defense. And then the other units I want to do is the, obviously I got six foot knights and they're just kind of equipped with whatever. 
And the last unit I'm doing out of these plastics here will be uh, expert sergeants, which use great weapons, essentially two-handed weapons. So the way I'll put these guys together is I'll be using all the spears in this in this set, except for the uh, the foot knights. And um, then for the sergeants, I'll definitely be making use of of um, the expert sergeants. Rather, I'll be making use of all of these two-handed weapons. But uh, I'll also have to give some of them just like I think a one-handed weapon with a maybe a big shield or or some of the other kite shields I have from from Gripping Beast. But uh, yeah, that's my plan to do these. I also have some uh, Perry Metal Sergeants on, on on horse. I think they're just called Mounted Sergeants, and uh, I'm gonna have a unit of those running around too. Not a very knight-heavy French force, but uh, kind of more of your uh, lowborn mercenary soldiers, I guess, joining the Hundred Years' War. So yeah, that's the Perry Miniatures part of this uh, unboxing. Awesome set. Like I said, I'm sure lots of people have done this online because these are great models. But uh, if you want to do the Hundred Years' War, go find this Agincourt uh, French Infantry Box from Perry Miniatures. Excellent work. They are going to release um, Plastic Knights soon for this era, from my understanding as well. And uh, as you can see from the excellent details that I showed you here, it's definitely something that anyone who likes the Hundred Years' War should get their hands on. The uh, the detail and uh, all the bits you get it is quite uh, quite impressive. And uh, the only thing I, I, I think I, I dislike about this pack is just the lack of heads. I'm used to having tons of head options, where here per sprue you only get two extra. Um, on the knights here, you're only getting what's attached to the body. So So for head customization, there's not a whole lot, but you honestly don't need a whole lot, I think. There's enough on the uh, basic sprue here in the French box to mix and match bodies, which should be enough. So yeah, that's my look at uh, Agincourt French Infantry from Perry Miniatures. Awesome models. Tell me what you think in the comment section below. What else I maybe should get in the future to supplement this. And uh, yeah, if you like this kind of content and want to see more unboxings, more walkthroughs on Hail Caesar and whatever else I plan to do, just like this video and subscribe. Thank you all for watching and have a good one.